On the agenda tonight, we're going back to 2003. We're going to be taking a look at Avril Lavigne, and she's going to be performing I'm With You. Hello, Phil here from Wings of Pegasus, and welcome to another analysis video. If you enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. So, I saw this Avril Lavigne performance, and it made me realize how much live performances have changed on TV. Now, bearing in mind, this comes from Top of the Pops Saturday, which must have been a spin-off from Top of the Pops. But generally, that show was a mime fest. They'd just play the CD as it was at the time, or even the tape going that far back, and the artists would just mime on stage. But this shows that even on Top of the Pops, there were live performances. And when I say live, I mean fully live, as in the band are playing their instruments and the singer is singing and it's not been post edited with pitch correction and they weren't using auto-tune live. So it isn't mimed or lip synced either. It's just a fully live performance and live vocal. So we will jump into this, but just before we do, there's a link in the description below as always. If you guys wanna watch this performance the whole way through without me interrupting it, because I will be jumping into it, but let's have a listen and see how Avril and the band get on. Footsteps on the ground I'm listening but there's no sound So immediately you just know this is a live vocal and you know that it's the band playing because I mean when you're listening to guitarists for example you know strumming chords you can hear occasional fret buzz all that kind of stuff going on and you know the occasional muted string all this kind of stuff happens live but as we have a little look through as well with Avril's voice she well first of all from a pitch perspective you can see I've run her vocal through the pitch monitoring software that we're kind of sharp in places and we're sharp here as well and with her vocal style being slightly sharp here it stands out more because she doesn't hold notes with vibrato and even when she does hold a note look at this really accurate on the b3 she holds the note but it's more of a, a straight line i was about to say exactly like this the b3 pretty much bang on there but no vibrato so when we have a listen to this I'm listening, but there's no sound there's no sound it's just a note it's not there's no sound and there's no kind of change in pitch if she does miss even by you know, a tiny amount is going to stand out more because it's a straight note it's not going to get hidden within the vibrato so let's just let this play on Isn't anyone trying? I mean that was that was so accurate there with na 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 yeah and we did have a little wobble here but when you listen to this again it's not like going na it's not a vibrato that you're necessarily going to notice very much me me it's it's more like that it's really subtle wobble Won't somebody come take me home it's a I mean, this is great because it's just a genuine performance. And this is the thing about when we go back to 2003, if you imagine back in 1998, where auto-tune was really announced with Cher's song, Believe, that started this movement to, to tuning vocals all the time. But in 2003, certainly, 
pitch correction was not at a place where you could use it. You know, it's not as easy as it is now to use, where you just double click on a vocal and it will snap it to these lines. So using autotune live as well was like share. It was really obvious when it was being used. So you couldn't get away with it. Previously, with genuinely live performances that weren't mimed or lip synced, there was nowhere to hide. You can't fake this. And that's why great singers were great singers, because they would do it and actually do it. They didn't have a safety net for live performances. And this is what we can say about this, that Avril is just singing with her absolutely natural voice, 100%, and there's been no editing on this, and it just is what it is. And for an artist like Avril Lavigne, a lot of her what ethos or appeal to her fans is because it is what it is. She's just putting her voice out there and people can either like it or they can not like it. But as an artist, she's not really caring. She's just doing what she does. And, and that's what I really like about these kinds of performances is it's not only a, a totally live performance, but you get the artistry of the, the singer just saying, look, I'm just going to do what I do. And if you like it, great. If you don't like it, then <laughs> I don't really care. So, I mean, we'll have a little listen on. And I am just going to take down the accompaniment a little bit so we can focus in on Avril's voice a bit more. Because nothing's going right. She's going right. And everything's a mess. And everything's a mess. And Actually, that just reminds me, with that backing vocal that just came in, I think when we got into the chorus, she might have a mix in her ears, in her in-ear monitoring system that includes the backing vocalist because she was, you know, pretty much bang on going into that chorus. Take me by the hand, take me somewhere new. And as soon as this backing vocal comes in, she's now between notes, which is, you know, as far away from one note as you can get. I might be reading into it too much, but it just seemed like too much of a coincidence that as soon as the backing vocal comes in, she then loses her pitch a little bit. So yeah, I mean, having somebody else's voice in your ears when you're singing is very off-putting indeed. <laughs> so that's why I just root my voice into my own ears. I don't want to hear anybody else. But let's listen on. Looking for a place. For a place. Searching for a face. For a place. Is anybody here? I know. Cause nothing's going right. She's going right. And everything's a mess. And everything's a mess. And no one likes to be alone. Isn't anyone trying to find me? Won't somebody come take me home? It's a damn cold night. I'm trying to figure out this life. And actually, she just had a little release there into her head, head voice. You know, almost like that kind of yodel sound. I mean, it's uh, very brief here. You can see it on the pitch monitoring software. But again, this brings up another point about listening to this live vocal. People might listen to it and think, oh, I like Avril Lavigne's voice or I don't like her voice. But for those people that don't like her voice or maybe they think this live performance isn't you know where it should be would they prefer that she mimed or lip synced or pitch corrected her vocals or performed with auto tune this is the i don't know the split that we're getting at the moment especially in the current day music industry there are so many performers that are over the top of a backing track so the performers aren't really singing or they're mixed in with their original vocal or they're not performing at all and then people are saying oh this person's got the most amazing voice and they're so talented and they're so consistent live but they don't know that the vo vocal that they're hearing live is the studio recorded vocal so of course it's going to be perfect because the person isn't singing it so would you rather have that live and not know that what you're hearing isn't actually being sung or would you rather hear a performance that is fully live and the vocal not be 100% pristine. I've mentioned before that I fall into that camp of ju just wanting to hear a live vocal, you know, warts and all. You know, if it's a little bit flat or sharp or a little bit out of tune, 
then it doesn't bother me because I know it's a live vocal and those things happen. As I always say, it is really difficult singing live. So you are going to get notes that are ever so slightly missed one night and then hit another night. But that's the great thing about live performances. Every single live performance is unique. You can never replicate the same thing twice. And we know that from the analysis videos that I've done on the channel in the past, looking at these vocal lines on screen, they will never match up with a previous vocal take unless it's the exact same audio you're listening to, i.e. lip syncing, miming, just playing the original studio vocal, for example. But let's just listen a little bit more. Life, won't you take me by the hand, take me somewhere new. And again, this is something that you will only get in this live performance. And yeah, this is nothing like the original release, but it doesn't mean that it's, that it's any worse. It means it's unique. And I love hearing this kind of thing. Take me by the hand, take me somewhere new. Listen to the way that her voice breaks here in the middle of the phrase. And this is the kind of thing that you will never hear nowadays, because I think producers hearing that would go, oh, we can't have that in there. Let's overdub another version of the vocal, maybe mix in a bit of the vocal from you know, the studio recording, or they might actually have a live vocal that they've performed in the studio to then have for live performances. So it looks like it's a live vocal, but actually it's, it's not being sung. So this kind of thing, I think it's really important for the younger generation to appreciate that what they're hearing for, I'd say the majority of release music nowadays and live performances, what they're hearing isn't a true representation of the human voice and even the voice of the person performing, especially if they're watching videos on YouTube because they're going to be post edited and pitch corrected. So they're not going to hear this kind of thing or any of these notes that are slightly off. Whereas for the next generation who are learning to sing, they need to know that when their voice breaks or when they miss a note, that happens to their favorite performer's voice. They will be doing that as well. It's just that because they are professionals, you aren't allowed to hear that because the industry see that as a weakness or not being the pristine vocal that every top vocalist should have. If there's any fault with it, they, they're going to pitch correct it or they're going to change it in some way so that nobody ever knows. This is the problem that people learning to sing, that's going to happen and you are going to miss notes, but they don't realize that their favorite singers are doing this as well uh, because obviously it all gets filtered out. I don't know who you are, but I, I miss you. And that kind of thing with the now I'm with you. It's, it's kind of not getting up to the B3. It's got that kind of bluesy, a bluesier sound than the B3 because it's just slightly flat and that's just expression. I just want to listen to this phrase quickly. Oh, why is everything so confusing? Because that kind of thing would never get through in today's music industry. And you know, it's great that we can hear that we started on the A4 and you're know, looking here. Na, 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 na. So we've got na, technically three notes because then we go back up to what would have been the G4. But you can see that these lines certainly aren't going na, it's, it's not making the shape you would expect. Oh, why is everything so confusing? Because this here should have been the A4. Na, 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 na. And then down to the G4 somewhere, but we kind of missed that. Na, down to the F sharp four. Na, and then going up to the G4. So yeah, at the end, this is it, that she's kind of saved that phrase. And this is the kind of thing, performing a live vocal, if you do go a little bit off piste with your pitch accuracy, getting it back for the last note is the most important thing. Oh, why is everything so confusing? So you can go, 
na 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 kind of making sure you're there na 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 and even doing a little run off there you're getting it back on track really important maybe on the side of my mind and there na see how she's now back where she needs to be and this is all just what you need to do as a professional singer is yeah if it goes a little bit offline just write the vocal get yourself back on track and then you know this next phrase as well yeah, 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 yeah. and now she's kind of exactly where she needs to be so this video really was just pointing out the difference between uh, the modern day live performances that you see on tv and on music shows and how it used to be back in 2003 which is amazingly over 20 years ago now but on a show like Top of the Pops where you still got a genuine live vocal an authentic vocal and you heard an authentic band performance it just seems to be the way that even Avril now uh, the, the older school <laughs> or the old guard of performers as she will be referred to now as you know 20 years later performing this song you know they just did it live and that's what they were used to and there weren't any ways to pretend other than risking miming lip syncing and it going wrong <laughs> it's almost like back in the day when somebody was pretending to perform and they were miming their vocal and it went wrong that was the end of their career but now rather than the industry saying, okay, that was ridiculous. It's ended the career of our artist. So let's make sure our singers can sing. They didn't go down that avenue. They thought, how can we make sure miming doesn't go wrong? And they've now perfected that. And even better, they've got auto-tune so that it doesn't even have to be mimed. The notes can be manipulated to sound a lot more accurate than they were. So it's interesting how the industry when they get found out about lip syncing or miming rather than forgetting about it they just find a, a more effective way to do it and not let everybody know that it's still going on yeah and it's great to see old performances like this just you know unapologetically what they are and yeah if you don't like it doesn't matter because at least it's live this is the other thing you, I mean the artist has got to get some kind of recognition some kind of credibility for that that they are doing it live that they haven't just kind of decided to you know, mime or sing along even with a backing track with their vocals already on there high in the mix you know they've decided to do it live as a full band which I think is great anyway thank you guys for requesting a look at this particular video keep those suggestions and requests coming in the comment section below as always let me know what you guys think and if you did enjoy this video please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and I'll catch you guys at the next one rock